Welcome to r slash pro revenge, where a sexual harasser gets fired. Our next Reddit post is from I'm Hurting Cats. A few years ago, I was sitting in a job interview and the hiring manager asked, what do you consider the greatest accomplishment of your career? This gave me pause as I've been doing the same thing for over 25 years. I let the mists of memory transport me back in time. This story involves Dorian, the nurse manager, Kip, the program manager, and Dr. Steve, the clinical director. Yes, I had three different bosses. I started on this unit as an already seasoned registered nurse, and I soon discovered that most staff who worked there were very, very young and inexperienced. For many of them, this was their first real job. They assumed that all the weird stuff that happened every day was just normal for the workplace. Dorian had decreed that no one was allowed to write incident reports for medical errors or safety issues because it makes me look bad. Non-clinical staff were allowed to hand out medications. They made schedule changes without notice. Additionally, this was easily the most toxic department that I have ever worked in, with various cliques at constant war with one another. I could go on and on. The troubles began one day when I opened my email to a message from Dorian, which stated very curtly that I was being investigated for an incident that happened on the unit, and that I was supposed to meet with HR to discuss the incident and possibly face disciplinary action. I was not to discuss the incident with anyone else. No date was given, no medical record number, no indication of what the issue could actually be. I replied that I would need the above information, that I would speak with my union rep, and I would meet at a time convenient for me. Dorian declined to give the information, so I declined to meet with him. I began receiving emails from him almost daily, each more threatening than the last. I printed out all of them. Then I contacted my sister, who's an employment attorney. I had to try to stop shaking whenever I had to check my email. I was keenly aware that this is Intimidation 101, but it's still remarkably effective even if you know that already. Because I'm not a direction follower, I was soon discussing this in the break room, and before I knew it, I had been approached by three other women who had all received the same email on the same day. After we compared our emails, we found out that they had been sent out about a minute apart. We didn't work the same shifts, nor the same days. We agreed to call in the union rep and refused to meet with HR. Dorian continued to escalate, including cornering us in the hall, stepping in chest to chest, and trying to stare us down. He was a very big guy. Before long, we were speaking to more and more women, and it came to light that Dorian had a habit of targeting them with this exact email, followed by other emails that were more and more threatening until the person would finally meet with HR, get written up for something vague, and then be forced to sign a non-disclosure slash non-retaliation agreement. It seemed that this time, he had simply picked the wrong four women because we were not having it. I can't even tell you how much time we spent at work with people crying about similar stories. None of the previous women had thought to call the union rep. So, we began to plot. We had limited time, and our company has a long and unglamorous history of protecting people like Dorian. Before long, the entire team was united against this common enemy. LGBTQ staff wrote up statements, backed with witnesses, of grossly homophobic comments, often in the presence of patients. Staff who were immigrants made statements about racial slurs. One staff member, who was incredibly petty and vindictive, had been compiling a dossier on every perceived policy violation and wrongdoing on Dorian's part since his hiring date, and he prepped it for presentation to HR. The graveyard shift, which consisted entirely of huge men, said, Obviously, Dorian isn't trying to flex on us, but we want to help. So, they spent a couple of nights cruising Dorian's social media posts and capturing screenshots of homophobic, transphobic, xenophobic, and misogynistic content. Worried that they hadn't done enough, the night staff paid for a cheap background check. And what a score! DUI, failure to appear, hit and run, domestic violence, and assault with a deadly weapon. Did our company just not do a background check on Dorian? WTF! Finally, two women came forward with complaints of sexual harassment. One incident had even occurred in the presence of the assistant manager, and one was documented in an email. We were ready. We flooded HR with meeting requests, and our union rep coordinated the assault so that on Monday we met for simple harassment and intimidation. I met with them first, and HR seemed unimpressed by my complaint. 
On Tuesday, all the LGBTQ staff who had endured racial slurs made their formal complaints. They said that the HR lady looked tired. On Wednesday, we told them about the background check, moved into all of his policy violations, and culminated with well-documented quid pro quo sexual harassment. The union rep informed HR that the union's attorney was eager to know how to proceed. HR assured her that that would not be necessary. That evening, Dorian posted a sign on his office door saying that he would be away for a few days and to contact Kip or Dr. Steve if we needed anything. Graveyard Shift reported that, over the weekend, housekeeping came and removed everything from his office, except for his name tag, which the night staff took as a trophy. On Monday, HR told us that, effective immediately, Dorian was no longer employed at the hospital. We all sat silently and politely until they exited the unit, when a loud and spontaneous cheer went up. People were hugging each other and cry laughing, high fives all around. The Aftermath to the best of my knowledge, Dorian never worked as a registered nurse again. Frankly, I don't care. Kip was fired three days later for having been aware of all that was going on and turning a blind eye. And because, apparently, he'd been touching women in the unit for a couple of years now. I hadn't been aware of that, but it came out during our HR meetings. Dr. Steve was also fired for sexual harassment. The unit hired an old manager of mine who had a long and well-documented history of... You guessed it, sexual harassment. I quit within a few days of him being offered the job. The department's foray into getting along crumbled. Most of the staff have moved on to other jobs where they seem much happier. So, back to the question. What do you consider the greatest accomplishment of your career? I sat up straight, smiled, and said, I took a very fractured team and brought them together to achieve a common goal. I like to think that I'm really good at team building. Our next Reddit post is from Ashley or else. My former boss is the worst human being I've ever met. He did all sorts of things to mess with anyone that he didn't like. So, a while ago, I was at a family event in a local park, walking with a young boy from our family who is developmentally disabled with Down syndrome, Ben. Ben does things fairly well, all things considered, but he's always been sensitive to anyone making fun of the way that he looks or his condition. We're just having a good time on our little stroll, with Ben and I both enjoying the day. Along comes my boss, Rob, walking towards us. I cringe at seeing him, but I smile and say hello to play nice. He says, there's something you don't see every day, a pair of ugly R-words walking together. Ben bursts into tears as Rob laughs and walks off. I deal with Ben and ignore Rob. I am super pissed and trying to calm Ben down because for a few minutes, he was totally distraught. Finally, I get Ben to focus on how he's made a lot of other awesome friends and family and that Rob is a stranger so what he thinks doesn't matter. We walked some more, and I saw that Rob was at the park with his wife and teen daughter having a cookout. And apparently, he had been on his way back to his family after he went to the toilet when he saw us. I immediately went back to being super pissed. I went back to my family and talked to an adult cousin of mine, Jake, telling him what happened. Jake wanted to get revenge on Rob, but I reminded him that this was my boss. I didn't want Rob to know that the revenge had anything to do with me, because then he'd make my work life even worse than it already was. So Jake asked me for anything that I knew about Rob that might help. I told Jake a bunch of things about Rob, but the relevant info here is that Rob liked to drink a particular kind of locally made beer at a certain bar. Rob had mentioned having a drink there at the previous Friday night while his wife and daughter were away visiting her family. Also, Rob had recently told a story at work about his wife's obsession with Baby Yoda. Turns out, his wife kept a stuffed Baby Yoda on their bed at all times. I wasn't there for the revenge itself because I didn't want Rob to see me, but Jake filled me in on the details afterwards. So basically, Jake approached Rob and put an arm around his shoulders and tried to kiss him. Rob pushed him off. What are you doing? At this point, Rob's family is really paying attention. Jake said, I'm just so excited to see you, sweetie. Friday night was so amazing. What are you talking about? Seriously? You're gonna act like you don't remember? I know that you were a bit tipsy after all those such and such beers at the local such and such bar, but certainly you remember what happened later. Nothing happened later, or ever. I don't even know your name. Really? You were screaming it on Friday. At this point, Rob was turning red and he said, You lying son of a... 
At this point, Rob's wife interrupted and said, Listen, I don't know who you are, but this is my husband. I'm sure that you've mistaken him for someone else. Please just leave us alone. Jake said, Oh no, I'm not mistaken. We had the best passionate hugging ever on Friday night, and now he's acting like he doesn't even know me. I told you, this is my husband. You're mistaken. Jake said, Oh, maybe I am. I guess it was someone else who took me back to his place on Rob Street's name and had great passionate hugging with me on the bed right next to Baby Yoda. Sorry. Jake turned around and walked away. Oh my god, Rob, what the F is wrong with you? You're gay now? Really? Rob's wife wasn't happy with him anyway, and apparently this was the tipping point that made her file for divorce soon after. Rob frequently complained at work in the following months about how he didn't care about his wife, but he really missed his daughter, and how much it sucked to live in his new place compared to his old home. Every time that he complained about his lack of a home life at work, I knew that he did it to himself when he was mean to a developmentally disabled kid. The best part is that he never figured out that I was involved at all. Our next Reddit post is from 17th Fret. This happened to me several years ago when my family and I lived in a smaller town and my kids were still little. My wife and I were looking for childcare for our two kids, a two-year-old and a six-month-old baby girl. Our coworker recommended an in-home daycare that her son goes to. We toured the house, and the lady seemed nice enough, plus we trusted our coworker, which was a mistake, so we went ahead. From the beginning, things seemed off. First, she had trouble receiving our payment, which was straight from our bank. Fine, she's a bit disorganized, but she spends her energy on the kids. Over the weeks, she started getting more cagey with us, not letting us step one foot inside the house when we picked up our kids. Adding to our frustration, there was zero support for our son, who was potty training at the time. The caretaker, Monica, said that it bothered the other parents if he had an accident, and he's not ready to be out of diapers. This was BS, because he was very driven and interested in potty training, and made progress every weekend with us at home. We asked our coworker about it, and she said that Monica has her good and bad parts, but she really does care for the kids. At this point, we came to learn that the coworker and Monica were close friends, and the coworker was probably getting manipulated by her leveraging the friendship to get more business. My wife, ever the diligent investigator, starts to keep track of how many kids are in there, especially because she would come home at lunch to breastfeed in the house. Monica was always nervous during these feedings and insisted that it kept the kids from their naps. Miraculously, everyone slept fine and my daughter got fed with no issue. Monica had a helper, Sarah, who would watch the kids with her. Now, by law, they had to maintain a ratio of kids to caretakers, with the ratio being more strict for infants. It turned out that, during the day, Monica would go out and do errands like groceries or go to the bank while Sarah watched the kids for an hour or more. This was a big no-no. We found out that they had up to 13 kids, and you can't safely watch that many small children in a house with multiple rooms. We get on a wait list for other, hopefully better daycares, and we decide to call the state. The inspector jumps on our tip and conducts a surprise visit. She finds Sarah alone with 11 kids, six of them infants. This is way out of ratio, even if they did have two caretakers there. Monica had literally been hiding kids in the other rooms of her house, which she wouldn't show to potential clients. The inspector also found a slew of other violations and she gave her fines. The inspector gave Monica one day to get back within ratio, which means letting go of over half of her roster, including my own kids. We didn't care because we had other care lined up. Sarah ended up quitting because she was sick of being left alone with all those kids. Now, Monica has the report of all these violations on public record for at least three years. I went ahead and gave her an entry on Google Maps with my review and a link to the report just in case anyone Googles her name. F you, Monica! Several months later, we hear that she was looking for kids to care for since the other families got wind of it and sought out better care. Yeah, good luck with that. Down in the comments, we had this story from Golden Owl. According to my dad, when my baby half-brother was a few months old, they put him in daycare because him and my stepmom both worked. One day, my dad went to go pick him up, and they were closed. So, he called my stepmom to ask if she had picked him up, and she said no. They tried calling the people who worked there, and it turns out the workers had left him asleep in a crib in one of the back rooms and left for the day. Needless to say, they never used that daycare again.
That was r slash pro revenge. And if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.